A very good afternoon to you and welcome to Conversation Oasis. This is a weekly free flow discussion program where literally just about anything goes. I'm your host David Morby, welcoming you to today's program and with me here in the uh, Oasis uh, restaurant here in the center of uh, Turku we have our proprietor and Mr. Executive we could say, uh, Yalem, welcome. We also have one of our regulars, Branko, who is, who is a student of philosophy at Obo Academy. And also we're joined today by Marco, who is studying biotechnology and the future of food. So that's something for us to get our teeth into, if you don't mind the first bad joke of the program. But Branko, you uh, have, have got art on your mind. How specifically? Yes, well, I was at this Philosopher's Cafe that we have, I have mentioned it before on this show many times. Uh, but yeah, a couple of weeks ago I was there and the, it, the subject was aesthetics and, uh, and of course, art and uh, what kind of effects it has on people and our lives. And, and uh, so I want to talk about the significance of art because of that. And, uh, and well, uh, um, because it changed... Uh, there's always a purpose in the the person that is making art, drawing something, the painting something. There's always a purpose in, to uh, something that person wants other people to think about. Or, s of in the case that you are making music, it can be just to make people happy or and make people dance or something like that. But there's always some kind of purpose that uh, you want to change uh, people's perspective on an issue uh, or perhaps just uh, perhaps just make something beautiful too. But so yeah. art must have a motive. Yes. And art is in the eyes or the ears or the mind of the person watching, the beholder. What kind of art turns you on? Well, uh, usually it's something kind of surreal that can say it's not too simple or it's not just beautiful of course I like beautiful art as well or beautiful music uh, but I usually like something with a text like yeah. uh, it's not too simple it's kind of it's strange or it makes you kind of uh, think about the point of the whole yeah. thing that, uh, that the point is not too out there. Can you be a bit more specific with your own particular taste in art? Well, uh, it's like uh, it, thinking about paintings, for example. It's that it's not too realistic. That it's uh, there's a fantasy kind of uh, yeah. That uh, and it's uh, hard to describe really, but it's kind of. Uh, uh, well, that something likes, that makes you think. Yeah, yeah. surreal elements yeah. like uh, that things are alive that aren't supposed to be alive, or that, that kind, and um, or perhaps like makes you think about yourself or yeah, yeah. Uh, Marco, your idea of uh, art. What's it for you? Is it music? It is. Is it pictorial art? What is it? Well, I mostly personally enjoy art in the form of music, but it's also a, a good way to deliver strong messages to people across social media and other platforms. And if you have something sensitive to say, you could like hide it in, in music or in a painting or in a picture. So in other words, art can also be political because if it has a me oh, message... Oh, definitely, yes, yes. Give us some examples of that. Well, we have many musicians who have made songs, especially uh, I know a few of uh, Russian musicians who have made like satire songs uh, where they uh, criticize politicians. The marches they have, the march music in socialism or in uh, uh, yeah, World War Two, the uh, Nazi marches, they were beautiful music, but uh, in artistic way, but. Uh, the uh, ideology behind it probably was... Was pretty uh, awful, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. 
Um, yeah, I think uh, uh, satire in, in music uh, as an art form is also sort of alive and kicking in the, in the Anglo-Saxon world, uh, even in a very contemporary form. I can think back to the late 60s of some of the songs of Tom Lehrer, who was a university professor, I think he was a professor of mathematics, who as a, as a, had a, as a hobby used to take his guitar and make satirical songs uh, about all kinds of subjects, from pollution to, to human relations to, to the politicians of the day. Um, I can remember that one song in particular, the Ballad of Werner von Braun, um, gather come around and uh, I can't remember the words exactly, especially when a microphone switched on, but uh, yes, he, he was an example. And of course in Britain, satire and direct political the, uh, songs by people such as uh, uh, John, Lennon, John Lennon, and of course uh, we mustn't forget the laureate Bob Dylan as well in the States. Um, but the Russian thing, that's new. Tell us more about that, Marco. Well, I haven't really dealt with the subject, but uh, during the 80s, there were a lot of musicians who, well, hid their uh, messages in their music and performed to a lot of people, and that way the message got passed around. So it was a kind of um, a musical samizdat in, 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 in Russia? In a way, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I wonder if that goes on in the Middle East today, oh, the, the well, kind of well. hidden messages in music. Uh, today we were talking with uh, one of our customers here about art, especially. And uh, I want to see that what is art for us first. Um, is it something that we are fed as an art by business and uh, money, or are we talking about real art as a unique language for communication? So, which has beauty, which has a message in it, and which has a lot of other. A great item, but uh, it's very difficult to make a line here. What is really art? And people often they escape talking about that. Uh, what is in their mind? What definition of art? Well, isn't it all in the mind? I mean, I must say, point out to the listeners that here in in Oasis, in the centre of Turku. There is a blackboard here where anyone can actually uh, draw what he or she likes, and we have quite a wide variety of, of art here. And it's all in this, and with the transmission of a message in one mind to in, into the mind of uh, uh, of someone else. Come and have a look at it uh, sometime. Uh, what, what what we were talking about? If if art is every anything that everybody can do it, so are we still call it? with a special name like art or anything else we can call it so um, or is something unique that not everybody can do it so what is for you i don't know for me it's just a unique uh, communication language i think it's a problem if we're trying to talk about like real art or try to define real art i mean art is uh, it's up to the per what you want to make of it. Well, for example, a game. Uh, a game could be just a game. It could just have... Uh, you want people to have fun. Uh, or, But it could also also be a form of art. Like, it depends on the purpose of the game makers. What they want to make of it. What they want people to experience. What they want people to feel. Mm -hmm. And uh, do they want to make it art? And. Uh, you don't make art by just calling it art. Mm -hmm. it's, it depends on the effort that you put into the work that you do. For example, uh, I would like to take a, um, an example like Final Fantasy, for example. They, I don't know if you <laughs> know the game, but uh, there's a, of course there's a fun factor to it. But they also created this whole world that you can experience and uh, uh, characters with uh, backgrounds and uh, like emotions that they experience and music and that uh, like every kind of, there's so many aspects of that game that that uh, they want people to experience as um, yeah. like as a virtu is it a virtual experience yes yeah right. yeah but uh, um, Bronco dear Bronco I, I heard once you said that uh, you're turned off if somebody uh, fart in front of you, but uh, then in talent show we had this guy who played music by farting. <laughs> uh, so how about that? Is that art or not art for you? Yeah. So if he thinks that he he does a great job. He is a fantastic way to uh, 
to make art? I believe I said that exactly. Uh, that uh, in the, the case you were talking about, I said that it bothered me at first, but then it doesn't really bother me as much now. But, but no, I don't really think that you can... That uh, Again, there's a certain degree of effort that you have to put into it. And well, I suppose that you could make an effort of farting, but I'm not certain. It's too easy. And I it's think you're proving the point that art doesn't have to be elitist. And I think that's mm -hmm. what you're, you were a bit sort of nervous of, that we're, uh, up until about a few uh, decades ago, we were fed art on a plate as being something that you have to go and see in an art gallery, something which is uh, created by people from a totally different dimension than to say people in the working or middle classes. Mm. Agreed. Yeah. Well, I'm glad someone agrees with me. That, 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 that always heartens me. Um, but it, but um, I, I'm, I'd just like to ask both of you, uh, of who are in, you're both in your 20s, uh, and uh, I don't want to sound condescending. And, no, please, no. Street art, do you like it? Uh, why not? I mean, if it doesn't like, litter or anything in like, public places, so and you don't like street art in public places? No, it depends where you do the painting. Uh, I, have this, had, I have had this discussion many times before because I have myself, uh, not in the sense of street art, but uh, made posters and such and around town. And Good. So I had this discussion that uh, if it's okay or not with other people. That, and I think it's perfectly okay, but you have to think about, because it's a public space, then uh, I think it's important to, to consider other people and consider where you do it. If it's street art or posters or anything, consider the place that you are, that, that you are uh, placing your art or poster or whatever. That, that uh, uh, yeah, okay, I go along with that to a yeah. point, but I think there are so many, uh, for instance, so many public places that are dull, grey and boring, but they need a bit of brightening up. And, um, okay, I'm, I'm not so sure it's a good idea to paint railway carriages with, um, with, with, with art, though, because it obstructs the view uh, if they paint over the windows. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, uh, that's, that's one of the pla railway yards team, seem to be one place where you see a lot of street art and also uh, pedestrian tunnels and, and so on. And, uh, and yet the city of Turku spends a lot of money paying an external contractor to spray detergent on, on, these, on these examples of street art and which pollutes, of course, the, all, all, all the vegetation around the area. But the, um, it, it depends what kind of message they have if it disturbs people. Yeah. Uh, so, like, if you go to Wall Street and then painting all this uh, socialist <laughs> socialism ideology in, in the uh, art form on the wall, so it's disturbing those people. Lovely, who are there. lovely. But, but if you go but to, the, to then the art is not elitist. Then the, the art is saying something like that. So is the square and paint all the capitalistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But. Don't you get a kick when you see Marco when you see uh, a message on a wall that that is painted nice. Um, painted in a, in, a, in a good way, uh, which which makes you think. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Because then it shows that, that art is not elitist. Yeah, I agree, but that's that's my point. That uh, yeah, uh, sure. If it's dull and grey, then absolutely, like do something with it. Yeah. But uh, but I think it's still it's important to uh, like uh, if somebody. A building, for example, if it's not dull and grey, that somebody put an effort into making it beautiful, and of course that's it's a bit um, how should you say, uh, like there's uh, it's many side, yeah. it's hard to decide what is beautiful and what is yeah. not beautiful. But if somebody put an effort into making something in the street, then uh, you should consider respect that before you paint over it, for oh, okay, example. right. So here's a, here's a question for everyone. Should the city of Turku then have um, places to where, where street artists could uh, draw things freely? Yes. And why don't they have something like that now? Or do they and I don't know about it? I think they have some, some uh, areas of free. Like, I've seen a lot of uh, drawing in Manila's area. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and nobody accuse uh, those people or nobody stop those people. Yeah. I think that there are some places free. Yeah. I don't think there's any designated place for street art, yeah. but there are street art in the center, for example, oh, that yes. people respect yeah. and they use they Exactly. It. You're talking about the mural in, um, tell me the name of the street, please. I don't remember it's, the name. Uh, Eriki Kato, I think, yeah. or Brian Kato, one of the two. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I have to sort of place my vote for uh, street art because I'm all in favor of. Uh, of, of, of young people becoming involved in art, not necessarily street art, I mean and it can be in other forms of art as well, but expressing Absolutely. through yeah. art in a public way and to take uh, art out of the hands of the elitists who would keep it all in galleries. And there's some beautiful things in galleries and I like to go to art galleries and, uh, and so on, but there is this down to earth art that I think is really good. Perhaps I've been in Brazil and Mexico a, a bit too much where where the, the, the city streets are sprawled with it, with this kind of stuff. Or in Lisbon where the city of Lisbon actually uh, has a very large designated area where street artists can do their thing. Now I hope we haven't strayed off the point but you're listening to Conversation Oasis uh, which is our weekly free-flowing program which comes to you from the uh, Oasis restaurant here in the centre of Turku. I'm joined by Yale, our proprietor, and also by Branko and uh, Marco. But, um, do you do you believe that um, they are allowed to do this uh, drawing or painting um, anonymously? Like many people don't know them, and if there is something that somebody wants to complain, they don't know who to. Uh, from whom they, they, they have or go off, or, or but conversely or, thank them for doing or it. Or if they have their signature then it's okay that to, to do it very well. That's why the idea of having a designated space is a good idea because then you don't offend anyone. And I want to stress here that I'm totally against all this tagging stuff. I mean that, that's, that's, that is so uh, juvenile and, and, and childish and we're talking about actually art in the form of murals and so on. Um, Let's just move on, shall we, to our next subject, if we've run out of steam on art or have we? Um, we are approaching a new year, 2018, and I suppose it's a, a classic subject in all discussion programs to ask our, 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 our panel here what they hope or what they would like from the year ahead. And I'm going to start with uh, Mark. So, first of all, my biggest expectations are seeing Putin and Trump impeached, as I believe everybody can, can agree with me on this. Well, I, uh, I did definitely <laughs> agree with you, but uh, then there are more of them coming. <laughs> yes, especially, uh, especially on, on, in, the, in, in, in the US and Russia, there are plenty more of them uh, uh, coming. I mean, if you, get rid of, um, if you get rid of Donald Trump, you have Mike Pence, and I'd be the last person on earth who'd want to see him as President of the United States. He doesn't like me for some reason. And then, of course, uh, if you get rid of Pu uh, Putin and the nationalists, uh, the, the liberal Democrats come to power, you have a man in charge by the name of Vladimir Zhirinovsky, who yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. particularly like Finland. Good point. Um, but you're, we'd all like, you know, I think what you'd like to say is you'd like to see a better kind of politician in the two. Uh, yes, a yeah. complete reform of politics in yeah. these places. Yeah. Any other wishes for 2018? Yeah, and hopefully graduate. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, are you coming to the end of your fourth or fifth year? A third, actually. Third? Oh, you, you, yeah, you, so you got yeah, another yeah, one after yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Branko? Yes, uh, well, I'm hoping to finally get my bachelor's degree done <laughs> after all these years. Yeah. And, uh, well, hopefully I get some more time to work on my own projects and and the world around you, what do you hope for 2018? Well, I suppose a bit of this, of the same what Marco said. <laughs> uh, well, I hope people would re realize uh, kind of that there are problems in society and that they have to be more active and hopefully there's a bit more, well, change in, well, 
hopefully people get more active. More in the, you mean engaged in the more engaged in society and politics and yeah because of the whole uh, Trump situation and uh, well the, also the situation with the government in Finland and uh, and of no, course the rest of Europe and climate change and all that so hopefully people uh, consider that, that their personal choices yeah. yeah yeah that's what I would say personal yeah and uh, yellow. 2018. Two things. More peace in the world. Yeah. And a free internet for everybody. I think free internet will change the world. Uh, easier communication between people. And then there is more uh, engaging. Oh dear. <laughs> Whose turn is it now? Um, peace in the world, of course. And I would like to see Finland taking. Uh, uh, a greater role in from the promotion of a new framework for European security to guarantee the peace that uh, our forefathers um, fought for between 1939 and 1945 and that we could continue to live in peace on this very small part of the planet. I read it up, Finland has done it before in 1975 with the Conference on Security and Cooperation and I'd like to see that happening again so whoever gets elected as president in 2018, and I think we know who that's going to be, um, I'd like uh, him or him to, um, to, uh, to, to, to proceed in that direction and actually I'm a little bit optimistic on, on that one. On the other fronts of getting people involved uh, in society, um, no. I think the ruling elite has decided that we should all be blinded by mobile telephones and, and, and social media and wants to keep us from participating in any of these great uh, subjects. The rich have completely uh, uh, given up on, anything, on, on changing anything that would make this place, uh, this planet of ours, a more environmentally sane thing, which I, I know it sounds very uh, cynical. But yeah. um, money is uh, because money they, uh, they keep their money in mm. safe places. You've got it doesn't pollute them. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. And and on the on the on the, on the, on the Trump Putin issue, I've just I said earlier what I, I thought. Yeah, um, it could well be that Trump will Trump will be in, impeached. Putin certainly no, but there's always such thing as a coup d'état, as we saw in Zimbabwe um, uh, in in November of uh, of, of 2017. But to be serious. Uh, uh, I am more pessimistic now than I have ever been since uh, the end of the, of, the, of the first Cold War. Someone take it from there, please. I don't, I don't believe that in Zimbabwe we, we had a coup d'etat. <laughs> I think uh, Mugabe was the head of coup d'etat for how long? For 40 years, 50 years? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, he had all the, the, all his people under terrible, terrible condition. Yeah. And the money of Zimbabwe was the worst money in the world. You could be a milliarder, I think. In the, yeah. Just the hyper, hyper inflation. Yeah. Yes. Right. So but that could that uh, I think is not considered. Good. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly think that it's going to take some kind of terrible disaster to uh, bring us to our senses. I just hope that that disaster whatever form it may take, will not uh, annihilate us all in the process. But I think we learned from short, sharp shocks in this, in this regard. And although that's, that prospect of that scares me almost to death, I'm beginning to think that it's the only thing that will shake us into, into doing something to keep us alive on this very fragile planet. We like to think that we could fly off to Proxima Centauri, four and a half light years away, and find an exoplanet that could lo look after our elite when they have, were, when they have finally got their so their spaceship uh, ready. But I don't think it's as easy as that. Marco, what do you think? Am I being? Am I really uh, an old fuddy-duddy fossil uh, pessimist? No, I understand your concerns. They are valid. Yes, but I, if I should add anything. I would say we could do also use more vegans. Yes. I really am very positive about the future. I think um, uh, internet is giving us the possibility to change a lot of things through um, communication, through uh, free, easy communication. Before, uh, people really couldn't share anything with each other and they couldn't travel easily and they couldn't. But today, 
uh, all this brain, seven billion people are getting engaged with each other. Every individual can freely get engaged with the other, another seven billion. Mm -hmm. So it's, that is a great potential. It's going to change everything. Uh, I th I'm very positive about the future. Well, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're positive. Um, Branko, after all these pessimistic views and one very optimistic view. Well, the, the thing you said earlier about exoplanets and escaping uh, reality, there was this philosopher, I don't remember the name, but who held a seminar here in uh, the OBA Academy. Anyway, uh, talked about the, the kind of Mars rhetoric that uh, we don't, we like to kind of, we, ha we have this escape plan that we are talking yeah, about, like yeah. where we should escape to Mars to, to have this like second planet uh, as a second if something goes wrong. But uh, he argued that, uh, that there's kind of complete fantasy in the sense that we have to focus on the, the climate change now, the problems that we are facing now. And we, have, we, have, we also have fantasy uh, that, that we should the kind of distance ourselves uh, from the problem that the problem is not us but it's it's we that are causing the problem yeah and we, yeah. we just don't want to face the issue yeah, yeah I think that, that that's very valid I think we should uh, we have we have all the technology to take care of it but uh, the only thing that uh, is a problem is money <laughs> <laughs> we have all the tools, indeed. all the technology that we can save and we can take care of the plan. But the only issue is all the time money, money, money. And uh, yeah, I don't know what is money. And a question of the human soul that are we prepared to really help each other to make this planet a better place to live? And I, I think therein lies the solution. When we wake up that we're just not one person, we are billions of people on this very small planet. Um, if we can have a change of heart, I think that's also uh, um, something I would hope to see the seeds of in 2018, but I so far haven't seen very much of that in previous years when this has been hoped for. But Thank you. We have to, I, I think, is the clock out? Oh, yes, yeah, so uh, we got. Yeah, but still, I think we have the virtual reality to help us in the end. I prefer the real reality. <laughs> I, I prefer reality <laughs> per se. Reality has always been a friend of mine and it's a friend of ours. Uh, Yale and uh, Branko and Marco, I'd like to thank you for uh, participating uh, in, the, in this edition of uh, Conversation Oasis. And I hope the listeners out there in Radio Land or on the podcast land, you, you've in, enjoyed our conversation. And if you want to join in yourself, we put this program together on uh, Monday afternoons, uh, just after 5.15, here in Udeman Kato number three. So if anyone wants to come in and, and join in, you'd be most heartily welcome. Uh, until we meet again, this is David Morby thanking you for joining us and hope you'll be again at these same times next week for another Conversation Oasis.